why don't we jump in and talk about cross-cloud compromise? This is where the hackers, it's, it's a simple concept. Uh, hackers break into, let's say, your email or your, your internal network. And from there, they jump into different cloud environments. They're not just sticking with one anymore. When they get to one, they get to two, they get to three. So let's take a real case. Again, in this presentation, we're gonna try to, to give you some very concrete examples of what we're seeing. So Matt, take us to the front lines. Of course. So this is a transportation company we worked with who suffered a, uh, we'll just call it a cloud services compromise. Uh, and you'll, you'll understand why we put that generic term on it here in just a minute. Uh, they had four employees that uh, reported back that their payroll was never received by a direct deposit on their, their normal payday. Uh, obviously, that's going to be something that's going to catch your employees' attention. They're probably going to let you know. So the, uh, the client went back and took a look and realized that, uh, that info had been changed in their ADP payroll system and their direct deposit information had been altered uh, to uh, send, off, uh, send off payroll to a, an account that the company did not have control over and that one of their employees didn't, uh, didn't own. So was the cloud system hacked? Well, the spoiler was, yes, it was. Now, how deep that attack went and how it actually started became a little bit more of a question as we went through. So the beginning of the attack was pretty straightforward. And again, this is what we see in about 85% of, uh, of malware or uh, compromise incidents. Uh, the finance clerk fell victim to a phishing attack. And this, uh, this took the finance clerk off to a lookalike Office 365 uh, login page. They entered their uh, Office 365 uh, email and password and their credentials were then stolen. There was no multi-factor authentication enabled on the account. So the attackers were able to log directly into the email. This is the first portion of the compromise. Uh, now, using that access, the uh, the attackers were able to move a little bit further, but I, I really want to impress the importance of this. All of this started because of a phishing attack, and phishing defense is one of the things we threw in here as something that really should be in your plans for the next, well, future as far as we can see it, not just a year, not just two years, as far as you can go, because this is a common, uh, common tactic that attackers will use. You can take some technical countermeasures, uh, obviously make sure your spam filter is effective, use a web proxy, and then cybersecurity awareness training is key. I am a huge fan of on-demand awareness training, especially these days with so many people working remotely. It's so convenient for people to watch it in 5, 10, 15 minute chunks whenever they want. Also great to have interactive webinars like this. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm sure this will help you guys keep yourselves and your team up to date on the latest threats. You can have email reminders. Basically, you want to use multiple methods to keep people aware of cybersecurity issues and have it be top of mind. But it's no longer the case that annual cybersecurity awareness training is enough. The industry just moves too quickly. And as you can see in the in the image here, we're seeing a lot of organizations moving to monthly training or even twice per month training. And that is very, very effective. Okay, so huge shout out to Derek, um, who uh, our dark web researcher. Thanks, Derek. He went down to the dark web and got us some screenshots because once uh, the finance clerk's, um, or sorry, yeah, once her password was stolen, or that doesn't necessarily mean that the attackers just use it themselves right away. Often it goes onto the dark web and you can buy it. So this is an example of the Genesis store. They sell fingerprints. I thought that was interesting. Cookies, saved logins, personal data, you name it, they have it. Um, here you can browse different packages of credentials. I love this. Um, Matt, feel free to jump in if there's anything you want to point out here. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think the, the line you see right in the middle of that image is, uh, is really telling. I mean, for $14.70 on sale, what a deal. You can get access to Office 365, Microsoft Live, Netflix, Steam, Amazon, Alex, Twitter, Auth0, and more. I mean, it is a one-stop shop for compromising tons of accounts on the go. And uh, honestly, the price seems pretty cheap. If I remember right, Sherry, they also offer uh, like perks and discounts if you order like more than $20 worth or something like that. We'll have to look into that a little yeah, bit Yeah, I, I know a lot of the auto shops too. I have not explored this one. But if you drill down, this is one of them that Derek clicked into. Um, and I think he got this, what, like yesterday? Um, yep. These screenshots are very, very recent. Um, so here you can see stolen Office 365. They're pretty fresh. These were all stolen from just the past month. Uh, Google account credentials, LinkedIn account credentials. A lot of people are reusing passwords. We'll get to that in a second. And the criminals are often stealing it from shops like this and reselling it. So after your password is stolen, it could get stolen from the criminals and resold. And that's what you're looking at here, Accounts Club. Uh, Brian Krebs, the investigative journalist, wrote a nice article about this just last week. Um, so here you can browse uh, different packages of information stolen from other dark web shops. It's so beautiful. 
Okay, so what happened after the attackers got into email, Matt? Okay, so as is the case in a lot of organizations, unfortunately, there was a, uh, a, a uh, password sharing issue or password reuse issue happening here. The uh, email address and password that were used to log into the Office 365 system were the same email address and password that were needed to log into the ADP system. So the attacker was able to log into the email. They can see the, uh, the finance and uh, payroll correspondence with ADP, so they know they're using that system. They tried the same password, and then they log into ADP. So the attacker has now compromised two of the unique cloud systems that this client is using, using that one single set of credentials. Uh, bad place to find yourself. And again, no multi-factor authentication enabled for ADP and for Office 365. Having it enabled in really either of those places, preferably both, probably would have, uh, would have stopped a lot of this from happening. Yeah, but I think this There's really also, illustrates. Oh, yeah, ahead, yeah, this really illustrates the importance of choosing unique passwords. And the human brain is not designed to remember a zillion different unique passwords. So you really have to, to be realistic, you need to use a password manager. Password managers can be used to generate passwords, and you can see in LastPass right here on the screen. This is how you generate a password. You can choose the different characteristics that you want. It will save it for you, and then it can even autofill in a way that is resistant to keystroke logging. So there are quite a few different benefits to using password managers. Um, I know many organizations have a policy that says don't reuse passwords anybody, but then where are people supposed to store them? They stick them in text files on their computer, they get fished, the text files get stolen, and they're gone. So it's really important. It's also not that expensive. You can see the pricing on the screen there. So in this case, unfortunately, we have a password reuse situation, but the victim noticed, right? And my understanding is that she, she reported this, correct? That's correct, yeah. She reported seeing some, uh, the only description that she gave us was strange activity in ADP. So there was, uh, you know, that, that spider sense tingling that something was going wrong inside of the payroll system. Uh, the uh, the uh, employee at this point did exactly what she should have done. She reported it to IT. They changed her ADP password only, and then they moved on with the day. They figured if there was something weird with ADP, let's reset that. Let's get it back into a, uh, you know, a good secure state, and then we're probably good to go. As we already know, that's probably not the the you know, outcome here, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it. But again, that is a, that is a pretty common thing. I mean, the, the lack of uh, a full view of a situation becomes a problem when we're trying to quickly remediate an issue. So this is a pretty common mistake, isn't it? I know it, we see a lot of cases where the, people had a heads up that something was wrong and they reset that one password and the criminals were like, well, we're still in your email. We'll just reset that right back um, or whatever, whatever it is. So um, when you have any suspicion that there's an incident, you may not know right away exactly what was compromised. But if you wait a day or two days or a week until you really understand what's compromised, the attackers will have compromised you so much more. So you have to take fast action and stop the bleeding. And I know often we don't want to inconvenience users by doing a password reset. It causes headaches. It can be very disruptive. But getting totally pwned can be way more disruptive. So um, when uh, Whenever possible or whenever appropriate, it's a good idea to cast a wide net on your password resets. And at a minimum, if you're not sure what the attacker got into, reset that email password just in case. Because often email is the linchpin. They're in email first. And from email, they figure out what all the other accounts are. And you may not have the smoking gun that lets you trace it right back to email right away. But that's often where it starts. All right. Take us, take us through the rest of this case. I'm excited. Uh, all right, yeah, let's uh, let's take it home. So uh, Tuesday at uh, 3 a.m. Uh, of the week that this incident happened, uh, the attacker obviously noticed they couldn't log into ADP anymore, but they still had access to the user's email. So what did they do? Well, they went to ADP. They hit, I forgot my password, send me a reset link. Reset link was sent into the email. They were able to change the password, gain access to ADP again, and they were able to change the direct deposit information for those uh, four employees, and nobody noticed at this point that this had uh, that this had happened. Uh, the money was uh, was deposited to a bank in Minneapolis. The attackers cashed it out, and then the funds were unrecoverable at that point. So that's pretty much the you know the the end of the hack. The attackers have successfully gained access. They've stolen thousands of dollars from the organization with just a couple of keystrokes, and there's not much that the victim can do at this point to recover those funds. They're kind of you know on their own at this point. 
So Matt, you've mentioned a couple times the importance of multi-factor authentication. And if there is one thing you do in 2022, I'd say deploy it right away on your personal accounts. I know many of us on our personal email are like, oh, I just haven't gotten around to it. It is so easy to do. It is so quick. It's not as much of a pain in the neck as you think. Um, and also make sure it is consistently uh, deployed on your web-based email first and foremost, and then on any other internet-facing login you can. Of course, when we talk about authentication, we're talking about verifying someone's identity. We do that in one of three ways with something you know, something you have, and something you are. When we talk about multi-factor authentication, we're talking about using more than one method at a time so that when, not if your password gets stolen, criminals can't just immediately log right in. One of the most popular ways to implement multi-factor authentication is using an app on your smartphone. Um, I really love uh, smartphone apps in particular because they make multi-factor authentication accessible widely without a huge additional cost. In fact, Google Authenticator is free. Um, services like Okta and Duo are accessible and inexpensive. And they can be convenient. So here you can see on the phone, it just says approve sign-in, approve or deny. Personally, I like that a lot better than just the code, but the code can be helpful as well. Whatever works for you and your community. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Incident Response for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.